developing the null and alternative hypotheses. Now in hypothesis testing, we have a null hypothesis which we write H naught, and it's a tentative, or in other words, temporary assumption about the value of a population parameter, such as the population mean or population proportion, and so on. Uh, now our second hypothesis is called the alternative hypothesis. Our alternative hypothesis is written as HA and it's the opposite of whatever is stated in the null hypothesis. So we have two hypotheses in hypothesis testing. We have a null hypothesis and we have an alternative hypothesis. And they're opposite statements about a population parameter. So either the null hypothesis is going to be true or the alternative hypothesis is going to be true. They can't both be true at the same time. Now when we do a hypothesis test, we decide whether or not to reject the null hypothesis. And since they're opposites, by rejecting the null hypothesis, we are then accepting the alternative hypothesis. Now there are three forms of a hypothesis test. We have what's called a lower tail test an upper tail test and a two tailed test. Our lower tail test looks like this. The null hypothesis says that mu is greater than or equal to mu naught, which is some value. And the alternative hypothesis is that mu is less than that value. In an upper tail test, the null hypothesis is that mu is less than or equal to mu naught and the alternative is that mu is greater than mu naught. In a two-tailed test, the null hypothesis is that mu is equal to mu naught, and the alternative is that mu is not equal to mu naught. Now, a good way of identifying whether a test is lower tail, upper tail, or two-tail is to look at the alternative hypothesis. Notice that in a lower tail test, we have a less than sign in the alternative. For an upper tail test, we have a greater than sign in the alternative. And in a two tail test, we have the inequality in the alternative hypothesis. Also notice that the equality is always in the null hypothesis and not in the alternative hypothesis. Now, when you're given a word a word problem to determine whether you're doing a lower tail, upper tail, or two tail test, what you want to do is look for what the test is trying to determine. Now, whatever the test is trying to determine is always going to be the alternative. So when you're reading a problem, 
try to figure out what the test is trying to determine and make that the alternative hypothesis. Now, since the null and the alternative are opposites, then once we have the alternative, we automatically have the null hypothesis as well. And keep in mind that our hypothesis test has to take one of the three forms, either lower tail, upper tail, or two tailed. So let's look at a couple of examples. And all of our um, examples will be related to the popular social media platform called TikTok. Okay. Now, in our first example, uh, suppose that last year the average TikTok video was 30 seconds long. Now, suppose we want to conduct a hypothesis test. to determine whether there has been an increase in the average length of TikTok videos. So in this test, we're trying to determine whether the average length of TikTok videos has increased beyond 30. So we know that the alternative hypothesis is that the population mean is greater than 30. Um, and so we know that the null hypothesis will be that the population mean is less than or equal to 30 since they're opposites. So this is going to be an upper tail test. Now, there's two possible conclusions in our hypothesis test. Either we'll decide to reject the null, or we decide to not reject the null. Now, in hypothesis testing, we usually do not say accept the null. Instead, we say do not reject the null, and this has to do with type 1 and type 2 errors. So if we reject the null in this example, that means that we conclude that the average video length has increased. If we do not reject the null, we cannot conclude that the average video length has increased. So these are the two possible conclusions. Now let's look at another example, again, related to TikTok. Um, so suppose that last year, the average time spent per day on TikTok was 45 minutes. And suppose we want to conduct a hypothesis test to determine whether the average time spent on TikTok is different this year uh, compared to last year. So what this test is trying to determine is whether the population mean is different from what it was last year, which was 45. So our alternative is that mu is not equal to 45, which means that the null 
is that mu is equal to 45. So this is a two-tailed test. Now, when we conduct this hypothesis test, either we're going to decide to reject the null or to not reject the null. If we decide to reject a null, that means we conclude that the average time spent is different this year compared to last year. If we decide not to reject a null, that means that we cannot conclude that the time spent is different this year compared to last year. Now let's look at one more example. Uh, again, this example will be about TikTok. Suppose that last year the average age of TikTok users was 15 years old. Suppose we want to conduct a hypothesis test to determine whether the average age of TikTok users has decreased. So what we're trying to determine is whether the average age of TikTok users has decreased from 15. So that means our alternative is that mu is less than 15, which means our null is that mu is greater than or equal to 15. So this is a lower tail test. Uh, now again, there are two possible conclusions here. Either we decide to reject the null or not reject the null. If we decide to reject the null, that means that we conclude that the average age of TikTok users has decreased. So whenever we reject the null hypothesis, what we're doing is we're accepting the alternative hypothesis. If we decide not to reject a null, that means that we cannot conclude that the average age has decreased. Okay. So we're not accepting the null here. We're just not rejecting it. So we're not concluding that the average age has decreased.